Hallelujah. He is truly Lord of all. Amen, amen. Well, welcome to those of you that are watching us live. Appreciate you joining in our service. It's already in progress. Well, this opportunity for prosperity time for the believer. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, first of all, we just uh, like to tell all of you, as Pastor Regina say, uh, click, like, and share. Amen. I think I got it right. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, share the good news of the gospel. Let people know what we're doing here at AKDFC around the world. Amen. I was telling the team right before we started the service earlier just how God is using us as a voice around the entire earth, around the entire globe. And you that are partnering with us, you are part of making that happen. So that means that the same grace that is on this ministry, that is on our lives, is also manifested and made available unto you. And so we truly trust and believe that the Word of God is unchanging. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're really excited and we trust that God is continually doing what He promised. And so today, for as we get ready to receive our offer, I'm going to have you to go to a very, very familiar passage of Scripture that uh, there's no question about most of you already knowing. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And then we're going to flip over to 8, but I want to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from the Amplified for, our, for an offering, picking up at verse 6. And you got to remember that sowing and reaping is part of the lifestyle of sonship. Amen? Amen. It has to do with my identity. It has to do with my increase. It has to do with my influence. And it has to do with my inheritance. So we're, And we've been talking about that already anyway as part of the overall teaching. But let's pick it up here in verse 6. If you have it in your Bible, regardless of the translation that you have, it says, remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. Now, that part that says blessing comes to someone sometimes is confusing because people assume that they're referring to this being alms. But this is not just alms giving. This is sowing into the kingdom of God. And you, you need to make sure that you're always being led by the grace of God when you sow. Because a lot of time people can be in situations or circumstances or going through turbulent and taxing times in their life. And you can reach out and either by sympathy because you've gone through it before or by empathy just because you have compassion in you. You feel like, oh, my God, I need to help meet that need. But listen, you don't desire. You should not do that if the spirit of God don't don't lead you to do it. Amen. Because everybody is not good ground. Mm -hmm. Number two. If God has another plan in another way and he needs them to walk out the, the whole step of faith, you could be disrupting their faith education. And that doesn't mean that you just feel the, you know, let people you know, go around to where they just can't get to a point of having any type of blessing of increase in their life and God using you. But it does mean that there are times that when the enemy will try to get you to a point to where you can't see that God is using someone else. But here's the other thing too. Sometimes you can do it because you just, you know, it makes you feel good. You're not really doing it by the prompting and the leading of the Holy Ghost. And when you do that and then don't get a harvest on it, then all of a sudden you're upset and going like, God, I understand. I helped sister so-and-so when they were going through this. I helped brother so-and-so when he was going through this and I didn't get a return on it. And the Lord would be very clear. He says, yeah, but I didn't tell you to sow that. Because it is easier in the natural to give to someone who has less than you. Because see, Christians confuse this, right? We like to think of sowing with the mentality of benevolence. And God says you need to think of sowing like a farmer expecting more. So farmers sow into the richest, most fertile, most expansive land that they possibly have access to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that don't always mean uh, the sick, the shut in, the broke, and not doing very much in the lack. Amen? Amen? Now, and I'm not saying this to you to say that you're not supposed to help the poor, but just understand the Bible says when you do that you're lending unto God, you're not sowing in for a harvest. Amen? Amen. Yeah. yeah, so in other words, you get a dollar for a dollar when you give to the poor. When you sow into the anointing, you can get up to a hundredfold return. Oh, yeah. That right there is just simple mathematics. Amen. But it also comes down to what do you really believe? Because, see, you feel better when you give to somebody else. Okay, let me say it a different way. 
You, you need a car and somebody else walking and you get in them, you feel better. You need a car and pastor rolls up in his G-Wagon and you be like, well, why, why do I want to so? Because I know that ain't the only nice car he has. And he didn't even pay a car note. What am I sewing into? A grace to Amen. not have Amen. a car note. Amen. Now, Amen. if you don't watch it, the enemy will make you get envious or jealous. And then the moment you do that, you stop the flow. And so we, we, what we're saying to you is make sure that you grab hold of what God has made available so that you're walking in the fullness of it. Let's finish up reading here, right? Verse Seven, let each one gives as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart. So in other words, it is not by dictate. There are times when God will make a suggestion for certain things or we may be, uh, you know, doing a specific project or something in the kingdom of God. And we'll tell you and we say, hey, we have, you know, certain levels of people that we're asking, you know, here's the bronze level. Here's the silver level. Here's the gold level. Here's the platinum level. And then you can decide if you want to participate at that level. But, you know, there are times when we go and people say, hey, the, the Lord is asking for people to give it a thousand level. Blah, blah, blah. And the Lord will tell Pastor Jenny and I, I, I desire for you all to do twenty five hundred has nothing to do with the other people that are there, has nothing to do with the level that they've set. I'm listening to the prompting of the Holy Ghost because we've already made it up in our mind and purposed it in our heart. Does that make sense? Amen. Listen, if you give and don't know why you're giving by the unction of the Holy Ghost, then you need to grow in this area because I'm not telling you that God won't prompt you to give and you give, but you need to have a revelation of why you're sowing. Because you're not giving away, you're giving it into a soil that has the ability to multiply it. Yeah. The, the word give there is not meant to mean like I'm giving it as I'm giving it away. It means I am releasing it into something that has the ability to multiply it beyond its current status. Do you understand that? All right, let's keep going. And it says, tell your neighbor, said, my seed is increasing. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Amen. And here's the power scripture for you. And God is able, so that's an ability, yes. to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. L listen. That, that means for those of you who get paid a regular paycheck, those of you that are on commission, that means that those of you that have a target to hit, that means those of you that have operational goals, that means those of you that have a certain amount of calls you're supposed to take a month, those of you that have a certain amount of patience you're supposed to see, those of you that have a certain amount of grants you're supposed to write, those of you that have whatever it is from digging ditches and holes to sitting in the corner office and processing paperwork to seeing patients in the hospital to taking care of people on a phone call, there's a grace available to you. You may be checking people out at the Costco or the Sam, and you'd be the fastest checker because of the grace of God that's on you. Amen. Your fingers just, just go through this super scan. Amen. They'd be like, I don't even know how you do it. You're just a super scanner. I mean, you just be, you just be sitting there and just they come through and they'd be like, man, I ain't never seen anybody sack groceries like you sack groceries. Mm -hmm. Now, some folks would be like, Pastor, that ain't no big deal. It is when you're doing it in the anointing. Yeah. It is when you're doing it under grace and you need to understand that God puts us in the marketplace mm -hmm. so that we can be a light. It don't mean that we always got to give a shundai every time we talk to somebody. Amen. Amen. You can run some folks off. You want to pray to them in tongues. They don't even know what Jesus is. And you want to sit there and talk to them in an unknown language that they have no knowledge of. Amen. They think you crazy. Number one. Then they think the whole church crazy. Amen. Then they think your pastor like that. So stop doing it. Amen. 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 We, we talk normal. Amen. Well, no, I'm just saying, you know, we can go to people and talk to them about their financial statements. Yeah. We can have a simple statement over your income statement. Amen. Right. We can have a conversation with you about your balance statement. Amen. Right. We, I mean, you don't want to be walking around and folks be like, yeah, you know, every time you talk to them, you know, they say Jesus, some, some in another language. That's all we hear. <laughs> and then they'd be like, yeah, don't go to that lane right over there. And you'd be trying to figure it out. Twelve lanes, all full and yours empty. Be like, why won't nobody come to my line? Because the word then got out. That's that Shanda lady. Do not go there. That's that Shanda guy right there. He gonna throw oil on you before you go out of there. What? Now watch this. We and we don't realize it that we're doing that because we're trying to impress people about our identity. Watch this. Instead of living in our identity. So I don't have to convince somebody I'm a Shaw. 
You don't have to convince somebody you're a Jones, that you're a Davis. You know, you don't have to convince somebody that you are who you are if you truly know that. Now, if you don't know, you know who you are, then come on over into Christ and we'll get you a name over here on this side. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, because I've met people be like, you know what, well, I don't know who my dad is. That's okay. Jesus, listen, God says he's a father to the fatherless. Yeah, father Amen? Amen? Some of you say, I know my dad and wish I didn't. That's okay. He's a father to the fatherless. Too. Amen? <laughs> and, well, I'm just saying, you know, so you, 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 there's nothing new under the sun. You, you can't walk around and say, well, you know, I just don't know where all this happened because I'm trying to live a better life and it just doesn't appear to be happening. And I'm here to tell you that the grace of God is available to help you grow, not only in your finances, but also in your gift that produces finances in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not making fun of you by any means. Tell your neighbors to all grace. He said that all earthly blessings will come to you in abundance so that you may always, under all circumstances, and whatever the need be, self-sufficient possessing enough this is a big one right here to require no aid or support let me tell you something I remember the first time that scripture came alive to me I want you to get this you you get to a point to where you don't need to borrow 20 from your cousin now. you you get to a point to where you ain't asking somebody to can you hold 10 see some see some folks don't know what that means right but I'm talking about you know I you, you, you ever met somebody, I mean, you know, they, they just love you, you know, you, 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 and they finally get to a point and say, you know, I can't keep, you know, helping you like this. Well, how about you get to the point where you say, I can't keep asking? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and to a point where you be like, no, I need to let God do it. And, and I even, as a parent, I do that with my children, right? I mean, there have been times when they, they would come and ask me for something. And I tell, I mean, all of them, I've said, they'd be like, well, Daddy, can you, I've said, have you asked God? Well, isn't that what we're supposed to do, come to you first? No, you're supposed to go to God first. Amen. You said, Pastor, well, you do? oh, yeah, we even did that when they were small, because sometimes there were things that they didn't need, they just desired, and we taught them the principle, well, have you sowed a seed for it? Well, what about the seed we gave you Sunday? Oh, that one. I remember this one time, uh, my, my, my daughter was desiring a, a phone early. Now, y'all know what I mean, see, early. Everybody got a phone now. I mean, they, you know, they... You get born, they give you a diaper, they check your temperature, and then they give you a cell phone, you know. Used to be, you used to get a, a stroller and, and a car seat. Now the baby gets a cell phone. But anyway, uh, I mean, just, uh, Pastor Virginia and I were watching TV the other day, and how many of y'all remember the, uh, the, the, the financial commercial used to have all the babies and stuff on it? Now they got a new one running, I don't know if you've seen it here recently, right? And, and, he's on the, and, and every time I think about that, I say, you know, there are times that we as Christians miss out on the fact that God has already made provisions for us regardless of what's going on in the world system. Amen. Because he always sees us as sons. Amen. I'm gonna say it again. He always sees us as sons. The challenge becomes is how we see ourselves. Amen. And sometimes we see ourselves through mistakes that we've made in the past or things that we didn't do right or things. I mean, and I've met people, I mean, still talking about pastor, you know, I know this right here coming back on me because you know, back in 75, I said, listen, wait a minute, hold on a second. The blood can cleanse everything up to the moment. Why are you still living in a past tense to where things aren't flowing well? You know what I mean? Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, because I, I trust God no matter what. No matter what. I trust God no matter what. And I'm telling you right now that in the season that we're in right now, that God has the ability to bless you beyond just your need. Amen. But your identity of how you see yourself will determine how much you will go after by faith. Yes, how many, let me ask you a question here, and this is all of you at home, those of you watching us remote, those of you watching by recording. How many of you believe you're supposed to live financially? I'm being very specific, because this is not a spiritual question. How many of you believe you're supposed to live financially at least 15, 20% more than where you are right now? Amen. Okay. Most companies, I didn't say all, most companies on average won't even give you a raise enough to cover the economic change in society. Uh, you know, I'm a country boy, so we eat sausage, you know, so all you pork haters out there, you know, no, no you know, uh, this is not against you or anything, amen? Uh, well, I know you, because some people get mad, they be like, I can't believe you eat hog, you know, and still love Jesus. Well, I <laughs> eat it every kind of way it come, amen? <laughs> So I'm just, just saying, so don't, don't, don't write me about this, but I'm just using this as an example, amen? 
uh, just regular pork sausage, you know, the little chub, the little small pound chub. Ha have you purchased one recently? You know, they, they used to buy them like two for five dollars, you know, every once in a while they'd be on sale for two for four dollars, you know, for a little pound of pork. We're talking pork sausage. Then you gotta understand, I grew up in a time period where we used to make it, right? I mean, you know, and, and I just, it's almost five to six dollars for a chub. Now, I have an option. I have this, uh, this, this uh, caption on one of my computers that I have. It says, no matter the economy of the jungle, a lion would never eat grass. Amen. 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 Did, did you get that? Amen. Amen. So here's a question. Is the devil making you change your diet? Is he putting so much economic pressure on you that he changed your grocery list? Wow. That, you, that you went from, and, and listen, I mm, don't, yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is, this is an example. This is not an indictment. But you've gone from, from buying the brand you like to, to buying the brand the store offer for less. No, I'm not, I'm, if that's what you desire to do, sometimes it's the same company that makes it, so I'm not knocking that, amen? amen. I mean, I know that for a fact because uh, Wally World used to be one of my clients, right? I mean, so they, they used to contract with people to do the same thing. But I give an example of a company that don't sell their, uh, like Listerine. You know, Pastor Jean and I, we, we use Listerine in our home, right? And so they don't sell their formula. You, you, you can go try just about every other off-brand you want to try. It ain't Listerine. I mean, like, you'd you be like, mm, no, this ain't it right here. It don't, the, the tingle ain't the same in the mouth. I mean, you know, you, you, you leave, you know, you'd be like, mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, you'd be like, you know, even the mint got a little bubblegum aftertaste to it. I'd be like, uh, this ain't Listerine, this ain't Listerine. You know, and they have on the little thing, you know, compare it as to, no, you lying because this is not close to it. But yet there are other things that we purchase, and I'd be like, you know, like uh, at one time I bought some uh, charcoal briquettes one time, and I kind of found out, I'd be like, this, this is the same as the Kingfords. This is the exact one. I mean, same size briquette and everything, just didn't have the case stamped into it. Kind of find out later the same company was making the same thing. So this is an example not meant to be an offense or an indictment against you. But I'm trying to get you to understand the financial economics in the world system today is shifting. The, the global supply chain, and I won't get deep into all this thing right now, especially when we're receiving supplies that come out of the APAC or the EMEA region that's not mass produced here in the U.S. is almost 2x on things that we used to normally buy. Gas is not the only thing, right? I mean, everybody can talk about gas. I mean, we're not even part of OPEC. Well, I shouldn't say we're not part of it, but we don't even buy our gas through that anymore. We self-produce most of our gas. Y'all talking about gas prices going up. I mean, that's just because somebody got greedy. I mean, because we're getting all our gas out of the U.S. now. But all this other stuff, you know, you ever keep I don't know how come the Happy Meal went up, because the toy went up. That's how come it was. Your Happy Meal wasn't cheap because the burger. The Happy Meal used to be cheap because the toy was cheap. And the Chinese would be like, we ain't making your toys no more. We, we got technology, we, we got all this infrastructure, we can make computers, so you, you go find somewhere else to make your toy. The toy went up, that's why the Happy Meal went up. Everybody, you know, y'all didn't see that? All, that? People want to know why come the children's meals went up all the restaurants? The toy went up. Give up the toy, I'm telling you right now, you can go buy that same meal for less than buying the meal. The box and the toy, the price went up on it. Okay, go leave, go over there and check it out, look at the arches and go over there and buy exactly what's in the box and then buy it together and see, I'm telling you, most of it on the dollar menu. Half a meal went from two ninety nine almost ten dollars. Thank God my children don't need no more half a meal. Amen. But look, we went through. Y'all laughing at me. I'm trying to get you to understand. There's an economy that outside of the kingdom of God that if you try to live on it from what you make through labor, you will always come up short. Amen. But there's a promise for the believer Amen. that we just read here that says no matter the need, yes. no matter the circumstance. You never need assistance from anybody else that while you're sitting there getting ready to place your order and the price change while you're doing it. Yeah. I, this is no joke. I am not lying to you. I was pumping gas one time. Never forget this. And the, I saw the guy out there at the truck and everything, you know. And so uh, I, was, I was pumping gas and all of a sudden the gas stopped. I said, what happened? I mean, I was, cause I was getting it full, right? And the guy came out from, from the inside. He said, sir, I'm sorry. He said, we, we accidentally reset the pumps. And he's this bunch of folks, everybody was like fussing and yelling and everything like that. He said, I, I, we, we just, you know, got tapped off and everything filled up and everything, so we reset it. And so when I started back to pumping, 
I noticed the price per gallon change. So I'm pumping gas. Listen, my, my, we got, you know, shh, you know, everything, you know, got a little click and everything. You know, kind of, you know, someone got the little speaker. They talk to you and everything like that. I don't know who they think want to watch TV while they pump gas. But anyway, so then, and then it clicked. That's like, I looked in the car. I was like, no, th this thing was not even half. I mean, because, you know, most of the vehicles we got, you know, got, have three humps on it. Like, you know, so, I mean, I was like, I know this is not enough fuel, right? I need to get like Josh and just plug mine in, I guess. But I mean, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm buying the fuel. And I'm going like, I know this is not right. Well, I noticed that the gas at that time, because it was premium that I was putting in the vehicle, uh, it was like 310. But all of a sudden, that the guy come out and he's apologizing to everybody and everything, you know, and then he said, just give me a second and reset. And then he said, you know, you may have to put your car back in. And I was like, all right, fine. So, you know, I did that. But the gas went from 310 to 370. I said, sir. I noticed the price gas changed. And this is what he said. Oh, well, the gas we just got costs more. I said, well, I want some of the old gas that was at the bottom <laughs> that I was already pumping. Now, that sounds strange, but the reality of it is man is in control of the economy in the natural for the non-believer. And there's some who are more privileged, the top 1%, 5% of people, that they don't feel the impact of it. There's some that lives in what we like to call the upper middle class and, and they don't feel the impact of it. But yet there are some people in the church and regardless of the economic system where they are, they feel the ebb and flow of where the economic system is all the time. And that's not the will of God. But yet there's those who they know that they know they don't make enough. But yet they always seem to wind up with more money than month at the end of the month. And people go, I don't understand because I know you make what I make. And I don't give 10% of mine like you give away 10% of yours. And, and you got a house and I'm still in an apartment. And y'all got two cars and we got a half of one. And all your children seem like they have nice stuff and we can't even get an Ike instead of a Nike. How you living like that, giving away part of your 10%? But well, see, that's what you don't understand. I don't give away anything. I do a currency exchange. <laughs> Jesus. I, it's just like from going from the U.S. over into Europe, I give them a certain amount of money, and then depending on the exchange rate, I can get more or less. Yeah. And depending on where I go, my dollar can go further in some places yeah. than it can in others. Yeah. Where every time I tithe, yeah. I do a currency exchange to the positive. God says, oh yeah, I can take that right there. And then God says, now, you, your 10% plus your obedience to give above and beyond, I now take your 80, 85% and I put it on an exchange rate that goes beyond the use of ordinary dollars. Yes. Tell your neighbors, only God, only God can do an exchange rate, an exchange rate to, my benefit, to my benefit even when I don't make enough. Don't make enough. That's supernatural. Amen. When Pastor Gene and I first got married, Pastor Steve Jameson, he's gone home to be with the Lord now, was the uh, pastor that married us. And he was the first somebody I ever heard say it. You know, I've seen people take up offering before, you know, pray over and all this kind of stuff, you know, because I grew up in church. But I'd never heard anybody make a declaration over it. I never, I never, not, not even, my, and I told you I had an uncle that was spirit filled, right? Now, I had heard them pray and believe that there was a blessing on the people of the tithe and everything like that. But I, Pastor Jameson was the first man of God I heard make a declaration over money. And he got up and he would pray. And he said the same thing almost every Sunday. He, and he would pray, say certain thing, and, he, and he'd make this. Act. He said, God, and I decree that every dollar will go beyond the use of any ordinary. I was like, oh, my God. I, I, wait a minute. Did he just say this money is going to go beyond the use of an ordinary dollar? Go beyond, go beyond it. Your dollar spend like 10. Your 10 spend like 100. Your 100 spend like thousands. Because you got an exchange rate. Tell your neighbors, I got an exchange rate. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on a new series called The Exchange Rate of the Tither. Amen. Tell your neighbors, say, oh, I, I got to hear this one. I got to hear this one. Pastor, you shouldn't tell the tither yet. Somebody else may steal it. They can, they can steal the tither. They can't steal the anointing they gave it to me. Amen. Amen. I ain't worried about that. Amen. And look, we ain't worried about no plagiarism in the kingdom. We're supposed to be teaching from the same book. Amen. Okay, I'll leave that one alone. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on. Okay, amen. Amen. My staff said, Pastor, don't mess with them this morning. Don't mess with them this morning. Amen. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, how are you going to plagiarize if we got the same book? But, you know, maybe your book has, you know, other chapters and words mine don't have. Okay. Tell your neighbor, say, because I believe 
I'm on a divine exchange rate. I believe that I'm on the divine exchange rate. Well, uh, tell your neighbors, because I trust the Lord of the harvest. Hallelujah. And one of the things that takes place through this divine exchange is the Bible says all grace is made available to you. A lot of people don't understand the power of grace. Because see, divine favor can sometimes connect you to things that you wouldn't naturally be connected to. And you got to know how to value those connections. Even when you in the natural may no longer need it, you know what I mean? But you still stay connected to it. Does that make sense? Um, you know, God has done supernatural things for us in this ministry, and then God has connected us to keep people. Uh, I, I never forget the very first time that uh, Polite and Associates started uh, helping us. Amen. Even after we got to a point where we got our own equipment, one of the things the Lord said to me, he's like, he said, uh, no matter how small, you stay connected. Amen. Because when you didn't have and didn't know how, God put them in your life. He said, don't you ever get to a point where you feel like you don't need them anymore. Amen. amen? amen. I mean, and they, they've always been faithful. I mean, just, I mean, just, just the family and amen. I mean, you know, from, from the police all the way through the associate, they are every last one of them just a blessing. Amen? Amen. No, no, I mean, because when I, when I look back, it took the anointing of God for him to hear that this was a place to invest. And then, you know, after, I, you know, we kind of negotiate all the stuff and everything. He's like, OK, you know, this is what the Lord told me to do. And, and I did ask him to do me one favor. Uh, he was at a graduation in Saint, uh, up in Missouri. I'll never forget it when I, when I talked to him that time. And he made this comment to me. He said, I, you know, I just don't know. You know, I, I, you know, I don't really need, you know, any new. And then I just said, can you do me one favor? Between now and when time we talk on Monday, would you listen to at least one message of mine? And in that one message, the Spirit of God told him, I want you to partner with this ministry. Now you said, well, Pastor, now after we go through it, I had to, <laughs> I'll never forget it. I said, he said, okay, Pastor, he said, we do this right here. And I said, now look, can I, can I ask you one other favor? He goes, you're already on the road. Go ahead. What, what, what do you need? I said, I said, can I pay you weekly? <laughs> he said, he said, all right, brother, yeah, we can do it. Now, we started paying early. Amen. So at least by the time we came, you know, we had already put a few payments in. Amen. Amen. But you said, Pastor, why, why do you say that? Because see, don't you get so big that you forget the people that God used to help you by favor to get to where you are. Amen. You stay connected, stay in covenant, amen? Because they, number one, they're a source of instruction, they're a source of inspiration, and they also are a source of grace that God has imparted in your life and theirs. For, so there's an exchange that takes place, amen? Yeah. And so you need to remember that. So go back and look. There's some people, some of you, see you keep the folks around you that bleed you like leeches instead of the folks that feed you. And you don't even realize it. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then plus, I mean, you know, Brother Josh, every time we give away something, he wins just about 90% of it. I mean, so, <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're getting ready to give. I said something about announcing some TVs one week. Now, Brother Josh wasn't even here. And everybody's like, don't tell Josh. <laughs> he going to win it all. Amen. Let's present our tithe and offering unto the Lord. Amen. We've got a good word that I think is going to be a blessing to you. I think it's going to help increase you and grow you to the next level. Amen. amen. Tell your neighbors to stay connected. Stay connected. 
Amen. Would you stay connected? Amen. If you give an electronic, I don't know if I said that the information is on the screen there in front of you. Amen. You can give via Cash App. Uh, we're still going to continue to use Cash App unless we see the government make a financial change there and where they start charging taxes or anything on it. But right now they haven't. So it is still available to you. But we have opened up a third option beyond just PayPal and Cash App. You now can also send your tithing offering via Zelle. Amen. Almost every U.S. bank makes it available to you at no cost. And you can send it to info at akdfc.com via Zelle and there's another free no charge option available to you. And by the way, there's no charge there for us or for you. Amen? Amen. 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 So all 100% of what you're sending is going for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And we do that, for, and I know there are other platforms and people have asked us, you know, like, hey, why don't you use this platform, that platform, like that. One of the reasons is because they charge. So that means that what we should be putting into the kingdom is actually being used for administrative fees and that's not good business. Amen? And we, we know that there's still a small fee on some of the other things, but that's one of the reasons why we leverage Cash App. That's one of the reasons why we leverage Zelle. And so we're just letting you know that those are available out there to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not against any of the other platforms, and in the future we may even use some of them uh, because sometimes it's just, you know, ease of use. But I believe that Zelle gives you the option to be able to do it from your mobile device as well as from your computer, and you can do it directly from your banking and saving, checking and savings account. Amen? Amen. Let's present our tithe and offering to the Lord. Father, we thank you. We come boldly before the throne of grace. We present our tithe and our offering unto you. We acknowledge that you are our source of increase and overflow. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We trust you in everything that you said in your word that you would do. And no weapon formed against us financially, Lord God, will ever be victorious in any part of our lives or our children or our children's children. We are a walking three generations of wealth generation. And we decree, Lord God, that it will be laid up and set up and for the use of future generations to be blessed. We call it done now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Stretch your hand toward your financial seed, even if you're remote and you're virtual, even if you've already sent your seed earlier in the week, which several of you have already done. And we thank you for your continued partnership with this ministry as well as the future. Trust and believe now that whatever seed you release, see the image of the harvest that God has promised to you. Father, we thank you that we're able to trust in, in the word of God. We thank you that it has the ability to produce results. And Father, we have an expectation of what your word says, Lord God, that we shall and will walk in it now. We thank you, Lord God, that we're able to trust the word of God above everything else, above financial systems, above every economic uh, interest rate that goes up and down, Lord God, the one consistent thing in our life financially, Lord God, for the tither, you have given us a divine exchange. You rebuked the devourer for our sake. You opened the windows of heaven over our life. You said all nations of the earth shall call, our, call us blessed. All right, you said our vine will not cast its fruit before its season. We'll never miss an opportunity because we live and operate in divine timing. In the name of Jesus, we call ourselves blessed, increase to prosper. We are six-figure tithers, and we're increasing daily. Father, because we're reapers, Lord God, we thank you that we are harvesters and we are gatherers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. As we listen to part of the song, we're going to get ready. And then the, right immediately after that, we will go directly into the word of God. Stretch your hands, lift your hands, and join in as we exalt the Lord God because we know that we love him and he loves us. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise and glorify. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we love you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, you may be seated in the sanctuary at home where you are in the car. Amen. Glory to God. We pray that wherever you are has been saturated by the very same presence of God that is here in the sanctuary. Amen. 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 God is faithful and true. Amen. Amen. To his word, we thank you that his word does not return void. Uh, if you would grab your Bibles, amen, we're going to jump right in this. This is going to be kind of like a Bible study. This is part one of the next volume of what we've been teaching out of around the art of faith. Uh, we're focusing in still around the best of 2022. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm expecting the best. I'm expecting the best. I'm going to say it like you really mean it now, like you really, really, truly do. Say, I'm expecting the best. I'm expecting the best. Now, listen, the enemy can try to give the impression like things aren't working out to your good. But God is a God of breakthrough. Amen. Amen. You got to believe that the anointing is working on your behalf, that you are the righteous, that there's a grace that's been made available to you. And no matter what, you're going to make it through. Amen? Amen. Amen. And just trust and believe with the word. So if you would grab your Bibles, amen, let's make our confession of faith. Say it like you really mean it. Tell your neighbor, say, I came to take over today. I came to take, came over. To take over today. Say, Father, I thank you Father, for the power of your word, for the, power of your word. For the gift of grace, the gift of grace. and the power of faith. I'm more than a conqueror. I am triumphant. Every faith fight I'm in, all I do is win. Amen and amen, amen, amen. All right, so uh, we good, cameras, everybody good? Are you good? Amen, hallelujah, praise God. Uh, turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah chapter 6. been kind of one of the foundational scriptures we've been using as we've been teaching on this overall series on the art of faith. We've been talking about what does it mean to operate and live in an atmosphere that's been created and set aside for the divine image of the righteous of who we are and inside of that atmosphere I learned the regiments that I'm supposed to live by we've talked about those regiments being not only regiments but habits but also patterns things that consistently operate a certain way over and over again producing the results that God has already made available to me as a divine believer and so what we're getting ready to do now is go into the next part of this which is what I call taking territory or taking terrain amen, amen. now I used the word terrain earlier just because it was kind of a military term to me is because one of the things that is necessary whenever you're going to have to take over a new territory is that you need to learn the terrain of the land. God shows this because he sent people out to survey or to actually look at the land or to go and spy out the land and that was very common. And so every time when we would see something like that happen, even with Abraham, the Lord told him to go and survey the land in Genesis chapter 15. We see the same thing take place multiple times around surveying the land. It's important for you to understand that you need to know the territory you've been assigned to. At the same time, you need to make sure you stay in the right territory God called you to. Amen? i give an example. When Pastor Jenny and I were first looking to move and leave from where we were living, we knew we weren't supposed to stay there. There's no question about it. We had already talked about it as a husband and wife. We knew that we weren't going to raise our children there. We loved the place where we came from. Thank God for the roots and stuff that we have. We were excited about that. But we just knew that there was another level where God had called us to do and part of the assignment he had for us. We thought we were headed to Atlanta the first. We're like, we're going to go to Atlanta. We're going to be part of Pastor Dollar's church down there. You know, we'll volunteer, do some things down there. And, you know, work is good down there for what I did from a technology perspective, you know. It's a, it's a good place for the brothers, amen, all that. You know, y'all, well, I'm just saying, amen. You know, power to the people all over, right? And so uh, I was like, I, I, watch this. I was going to be comfortable there. I didn't have the question that when I said I want some tea, if it was going to be sweet or not. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, and, and for the most part, cornbread wasn't going to taste like cake most of the time. Amen? Nothing against you cake, cornbread, eating people. Amen? I'm just saying, you know, my cornbread don't taste like cake most of the time. Amen? I know some of y'all like it with three cups of sugar on the side. Amen? But that's okay. Amen? But I was going to be in a territory, in a terrain that I was familiar with. But you don't need no faith in combat skills for what you know. You've been called for the unknown. Right. Tell your neighbor, say, I've been called, I've been called to, take over to take over new territory. New territory. You've been called to take over new territory. Amen. How dare you tell me, well, I'm not real sure. Folks, providers, you know, Pastor, you, you just way up there, McKinney, the ain't nothing up there. I say, so you ain't surveyed the land lately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two years in a row, fastest growing city in America. Wow. America. Who would have thunk it? Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> I would say, well, okay, then option number two was Florida. 
We had a job offer to go to Florida. They made, they made an offer to us. Why don't you go down here and take this account? Holy Ghost said, that's not your account. Boy, was I glad I didn't take that. Man, that whole thing just turned upside down. The person that did take it, I mean, they ended up leaving the company and all this stuff. And God, God directed me here. But I didn't even know there was such a place as a McKinney, Texas. But yet, God says, this is the terrain, this is the land. And when he does that, you need to understand that there's certain powers and, and things that come available to you. So what we're going to do today is kind of transition you out of what we were talking about around regiments. We talked about having the right mindset for dominion and success on Wednesday night. I'm going to pick up kind of right there at the end, right? We're going to hook up. Amen. You, you know, how you hook a trailer up right there. So that's where we're going to hitch our trailer at today. OK. And then from there, we're going to step over into a few other key things that I think is going to be a blessing to you. And I believe that it's going to actually help you kind of grow and go to the next level. Tell your neighbors, I'm ready to go. Well, Pastor, what is it going to take me to? Number one, we're going to teach you what it means to adjust to the kingdom of God. And then we're going to talk about what it means to develop in the regiments of the new atmosphere of God. And then we're going to, we're going to walk into the third one that I think was just going to be a, a, a show enough breakthrough that's going to help you get all the way through to the next level. Tell your neighbor, because I'm taking new territory. Isaiah chapter 6, picking it up in verse 4 and 5 to make it shorter. We've been reading the whole part. I'm reading from the ESV. It says, And the foundation of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now, We've given you multiple examples of the fact that there are times when the manifestation presence of God shows up, that when he shows up, his presence shifts the atmosphere that you're in. I gave an example in times past when Pastor Jen and I were believing God for a house. I had the opportunity to be at a church that was in the, the inner city of Detroit. And while I was there, I experienced this smoke-like environment where the pastor gave instruction to the praise and worship team that you need to pray from the sheet music that God's downloading to you right now and you can't play any song that you know. And they, they started off three or four songs. He's like, nope, this is this. Nope, we sang that this morning. Nope, we sang that last week. And then all of a sudden, he said, yep, that's it. That's it. That's it. And then all of a sudden, you could see this mist that kind of came into the service. Nobody was singing a song other than the angels. And there was this cloud that came over. And all of a sudden, testimony started coming out. While we were just sitting there and they were just playing, a gentleman came in off the street and was looking for someone and went over and whispered in her ear. She yelled out. And, and, and Pastor wasn't even moved by it. I was like, okay. Most folks have been like, okay, y'all need to hold that down right there. He said, he said t t tell what happened, sister. I mean, like he knew. And she said, well, my son, they had said that they weren't going to let him out. He had gone up. He's gotten saved, living his life for Christ, been getting people saved and doing all these things. And the last five times he'd gone up for parole, they rejected it. And he just went up for parole on three days ago, and they rejected it again. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me, don't let go of it, yeah. that, that it was going to be turned around. And they just told me he at the house. Come to find out the guy who was saying no, 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 no. They found something on him. He now in jail. Wow. And then they went back and looked at all the ones that he had been rejecting because he was the only one because it had to be a unanimous vote. And now this person gets to go come home. Tell your neighbor said, I believe the smoke did that. I believe the smoke did that. Now, what do you mean by the smoke, Pastor? About the anointing, the presence of God. I believe that we entered into a place beyond the seen to the unseen, enabling and equipping us of what our faith was out there for. It caused it to now manifest into the natural realm. And one of the things you need to understand is that if we get to functioning in regiments that's really more like traditions, regardless if the atmosphere of faith is there, you can miss it because you're trying to make a blessing instead of receiving the manifestation of one. Amen. 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 Now, I, I'm, I'm not, and I'm, I'm trying to get to a certain place today, but I want to make sure you understand something. Your regiments, you should learn in the atmosphere of where God is. Amen. You guys, I think we talked about it every, every service, right? When I was at uh, BSU, right? Uh, college Bible, stu Bible Student Union. Is that what? Pastor Jenny here. Baptist Student Union, thank you. I was in the Baptist Student Union my freshman year of college, right? First night I'm all there and everything, you know, somebody had invited me to go. And so I'm there and, and the gentleman asked me to pray. And I told you all I was getting ready to bend down on one knee, right? The guy said, he said, well, why don't you pray for it? We, you know, finish eating all our snackets and stuff, you know, and, you know, talking and laughing and everything, you know. And so when I get ready to pray, you know, I, I, I get ready to get down on one knee. And he grabbed me by the shoulder. He said, hey, bro, what you doing? I said, I thought you wanted me to pray. He said, yeah. I said, that's what I was getting ready to do. He said, well, you can't pray standing up. I was like, how Jesus is going to hear me? 
Now, see, y'all laugh, but see, I came out of the atmosphere that when we did our devotion, the deacon got down on one knee over in the corner. And he faced the corner. I don't know why he faced the corner. It's like, like you know, we weren't supposed to see his face while he was talking, but he did. He faced, but y'all, come on now, is there somebody? Anybody out there said, Pastor, I know what you're talking about. But anyway, that particular night, everybody laughing at me and everything, and then there's one sister, I don't even know her name to this very day. She, was, she said, that's all right, brother. I came from there too. That's all right. That's all right. She said, shoot. She said, that's all right. She said, she said now Jesus can hear you standing up, but that's okay. Amen. And, and then, then I prayed and everything. You know, then I, you know, I, of course, I, I tried to go overboard. You know, I, I, every scripture I knew, which it wasn't a whole lot. But look, I said every Easter prayer I had ever said <laughs> that very night right there. I want to show them. Now, but now, now, I've learned since then that wasn't the right thing to do. Amen? Because he, he said, oh, no, he said, no, brother, okay, that's, that's long enough. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's going to keep me off my knee. I mean, I'm going to show you I know how to pray. Amen. Now, what was happening? Tradition was trying to now come into an atmosphere that that was not necessary. And listen to me, when you're operating in faith, the environment may not be conducive to the atmosphere, but the atmosphere of Christ, the atmosphere of the anointing, the atmosphere of faith can shift the local environment to align to the kingdom environment. And even though everybody else won't understand what happens, it'll still manifest. That's what we see in Mark chapter 5 with the woman with the issue of blood. That's what we see in Mark chapter 5 with Jairus' daughter. That's what we see in Matthew chapter 8 with the, uh, the centurion and his servant. Because the atmosphere was shifted by faith. Amen. So faith has the ability to come into an atmosphere and realign it to what I need in my life. Amen? All right, so now, Pastor, why is this so important? Because now we're getting ready to go through a transition period, and the children of Israel has already experienced multiple transitions. Number one, Moses shows up. This is after the time of Joseph, and all the favor with Pharaoh has now gone away, and now they've been enslaved for a long period of time, and God is getting ready to transition them to a people that are free. But you got to understand, they've been enslaved for 400 years. That's multiple generations. That's at least four. Could be five or so, but at, the, you know, at that time, that's at least four generations. Now, this is significant because that means that Joseph grew up as a slave. So now he's got to be able to change his paradigm because eventually he's going to be called a leader. This is why God, uh, I believe, assigned him to work alongside with Moses. But I want you to see this. The first part of the transition, God loaded him up. Supernatural favor. Running over. Amen? And what's the first thing they do once they get more than enough? More than they ever had in their entire life. More than they know what to do with. Watch this. Not go give praise to the God that set them free. Go give praise to the God that kept them in bondage. That's how come God can't give you too much, too fast. Because the very thing that had you enslaved could be the thing that you still have an image of. See, you can't give a corner dice roller a million dollars overnight. Because he's going to still throw them dice. He's just going to throw them at the table. Oh, okay, okay, so y'all don't, no, 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 because see, because see, money is an amplifier to sin. And what you used to do at the Mustang Sally for $15 an hour, you are now doing your yacht. Because you are created to worship the God that provides. And whatever that God is in your life, that's where you're going to get that permission. Go, go back and look at your checkbook for the last month. What did you give more homage to than anything else? Some of you be like, my bills, Pastor, my bills. Then okay, then that's what you've been slave to in your mind if you don't change it. Because if you don't become a tither and a sower, and I understand financially, percentage-wise, your bills may be more than your tithe. I get that part. But that don't mean that you're supposed to stop tithing and stop sowing because you create an atmosphere for that transition to take place. And opportunities start showing up. We've been working with some people here locally, right, on some things, trying to tell them. Say, look, I'm telling you, once you get in faith, and even though you go through a couple crisis moments, all of a sudden opportunities start coming up. Amen. You'd be like, man, okay, wait a minute now. Because, this, this, you know. November, October, you know, this thing was hard. You know, then all of a sudden I go through these faith fights and now all of a sudden in the middle of the faith fight, opportunity showing up. Amen. You got to be able to trust and believe that God is faithful to his word. Yeah. Tell your neighbors to shift the atmosphere. Shift the atmosphere. All right, now watch this. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16. Hebrews 9, Hebrews, hallelujah, chapter 9, verse 16. And then we're going to show you, tell your neighbors to say it's time to transition, time to, transition. to another level. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16, I'm reading out of the uh, New King James. It says, for where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. 
For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the tester lives. Now, I want you to listen to verse 16 in the message translation. It's probably on the screen there in front of you if you don't have one at home. Listen to what it says. It says, like a will that takes effect when someone dies, the new covenant was put into action at Jesus' death. His death marked the transition from the old plan to the new one. Canceling the old obligations and accompanying sins and summoning the heirs to receive the eternal inheritance that was promised them, he brought together God and his people in a new way. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm a recipient, I'm a recipient. Of, the of the New Testament. Amen. This is how come you hear me make the statement all the time that the new covenant doesn't start at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the fulfillment of the old covenant. Even though your Bible has that sheet of paper in there, that's just a natural man putting it in there thinking that was the right place to put it. The New Testament actually doesn't fully manifest itself unto the book of Romans. You say, you mean the book of Acts? No, because the book of Acts, the Holy Ghost is when he first shows up and manifests himself. Amen? And so it becomes a historical documentation of how the church is supposed to live. And by the way, technically the book of Acts hasn't ended. We live in it. Amen? So the first book that we see a reference to for the New Testament in manifestation is in the book of Romans. We see the law of faith in manifestation. We see the fact that we're supposed to go from grace to grace and faith to faith. We see that faith is how we overcome and everything that God called us to. So all these different things are taking place. Now don't get caught all up on the, if it's New Covenant, New Testament. I'm just making that statement for those that desire to know and grow. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, don't get, don't get off track. Don't get off track. Now, what I'm trying to get you to see is that where we're headed to right now, for you to take your territory, is that not only do you got to transition place to place, We've already seen the children of Israel, they go from Egypt to the wilderness, they go from in the wilderness, they cross over the Red Sea, and then they go from the Red Sea uh, into the wilderness to where they wander, and then they go from there over into the promised land, they cross over the Jordan, and then they fight some battles and all those different things. You need to understand, as you get ready to transition to take land, you can't do it without a fight. Amen. And you've been called to fight the good fight of all right, 2 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Now, why is it so important for you to understand this? Is that most Christians think, I'm going to speak it and go take it. But along with that speaking, you're going to actually have to walk out some faith. There's some things you got to do. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm preparing myself for transition. Now, we talked about what does it mean to operate and live in the best. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because you already know these. Number one, I feel to believe what God says at all times. Tell your neighbor, say, no matter what, I believe God. I expect the Word of God to always work. I'm going to say it again. I expect the Word of God to always work. Number three, I train myself to speak the Word only. I train myself to speak the Word only. Tell your neighbors to stop saying all that crazy stuff. How are you going to get to the next level, get to the level of breakthrough, get to the level of increase and overflow if you don't speak and say what the Word of God says? Here's why. Because you don't believe it when we tell you that you live more out of what you think and say than you do anything else. Because see, for every action that you take, a thought preceded it. For every word that you spoke, a thought preceded it. You ever been around somebody and people say something, you'd be like, uh-huh, you didn't mean to say that out loud. But it was in their thought life so much, they just couldn't help themselves. I've seen people in the workplace do it. I, I've seen men who were supposed to be smart and intellectual and intelligent, who didn't see women the right way, just, just all of a sudden in, a, in an environment to get the sand and joking and playing, and all of a sudden something come out and everybody be like, did he just say what I think he said? And of course, they didn't think anything about it. But see, the world done shifted on them. And you know, people talking about me too, me too. Be like, me too, me too got a husband. Right. Okay, y'all get that one on the way home. All right, all right. See, believe, expect, speak, next until your neighbor said transform, transform. My, lifestyle my lifestyle daily. There should be a shifting taking place in your life. As you get instruction each week, after you get past the little point to where you're kind of upset with your shepherd for a little bit. Amen. And you do. You have to get past that. Come on now. No, no, I, I'm not naive to it. I mean, because all y'all don't leave here and be like, hey, I need to go get past some, uh, a seed. You go get past a meal. I mean, because some of you leave here and be like, no, Jesus, it's going to take some faith to sow that man. Because would he just say it to me? And then the Lord would be like, no, I told him to say it. And you'd be like, you did, Lord? I, I didn't know you told him everything. I didn't tell him everything. You just thought I told him everything. 
okay, all right. Then, then the next week, you back smiling at me again. Hey, pal, how you doing? I'll be like, oh, you okay now, huh? Amen. But I see how you live. I thought, hey, y'all have a good week. <laughs> you have a good week. Mm. I better not pass your car there with them tires. You know, be like, no, why? Because that transition, tell you, they said, when I'm transitioning, sometimes, sometimes I can be easily offended. I can See, sometimes when I'm going through transition, if I don't watch it, the little small stuff will get on my nerve. Sometimes when I'm in transition, I mean, Frank can hit that nerve, and all of a sudden that nerve will reverberate back through, and you'll be like, Frank, this ain't the day. And, 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 and Frank will be like, baby, <laughs> you need some rest, amen. Put, put your feet up, amen. Tell your neighbor, say, you got to watch it when you're going through transition. Don't be led by your emotions. When you're going through transition, don't be led by your emotions. So we talked about the fact, number one, the atmosphere of faith. We talked about what it meant to have a regimen of faith. And now what we're going to focus on is going to be the territory of faith or the terrain of faith where I'm supposed to take over. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm taking territory. I'm taking territory. Now, this is important because there's going to be three things that you've got to make sure of. Number one is around your thought life. Number two is around the transition. And number three is going to be around the training. Leviticus 16 and 2, we're going to read through a couple of reference ones from last week. It says, and the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, your brother, not to come at, come at any time into the holy place inside the veil, before the mercy seat that is on the ark, so that he may not die. For I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. Tell your neighbor, said, his presence, his, presence. his atmosphere. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 10. And when the priest came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord. So that the priest could not stand the minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon said, the Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. So he's talking about the place to where it was manifested. Isaiah 55 and 11. A couple of translations. The CEB. So is my word that comes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me empty. Instead, it does what I want, accomplishes what I intend. Isaiah 55 and 11 in the New Living. It is the same way with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere that I send it. The message translation. So will the words that come out of my mouth not come back empty handed. Thank you, Jesus. They'll do the work I sent them to do. They will complete the assignment that I gave to them. Now, I want you to understand something. This is God speaking consistently and continually of what his word will produce in the life of believers. And we have to get to a point where we trust God. Tell your neighbors, because I, I trust God. No matter what. We gave you some examples. Number one, I'm supposed to speak like God. I'm supposed to sow like God. I'm supposed to see the unseen like God. And then I need to understand that sonship mentality is a regiment. Amen. And we said that in that sonship, it governs how I think, how I act, and how I make decisions. Tell your neighbors how I think, how I, think, how I, act, how I act, and how I make decisions. All right, Proverbs 4 and 23, we said in, this, in the CEB, more than anything, guard, protect your mind, for life flows from it. The ERV says, above all, be careful what you think, because your thoughts do what? They control, say control my life. I think we told you we want you to think like royalty. We want you to act like a, a lion with boldness and courage. And we want you to make decisions like a king. Amen. Now, four key bullets we gave you on last week that's going to kind of set this foundation as we go into the next part. I tell your neighbor, said that was just a quick review. Don't no worry about how long it was. It was still a good quick review. Amen. Number one, I have the ability to control my thought life. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I have the ability to control my thought life. Tell your neighbor, say, you can control your thoughts. Uh, our natural example, uh, we ministering to a, one of the things Pastor Regina and I, let me, say the, let, me, let me back up. One of the things that Pastor Regina and I have learned is that we don't counsel married couples without the spouse there. Because there's two sides to every story. And, and so what we, we know we learned that as we develop and grow, you know. And so I um, had this one time, this particular man who told me, he said, you know, I, Pastor, you just got to understand, you know, just, you know, I just like women. He said, you know, I know I'm married and everything. He said, but I just, I just like women. And he said, you know, and I've been praying, I've been fasting, you know, I've been rubbing oil all over myself and everything. He said, Pastor, I did everything the Bible said to do, and I just don't know how I'm going to be able to fix it. He said, Pastor, I need you to help me. He said, what can I do to deal with it? I said, tell your wife. <laughs> He said, he said, what? I said, tell you why. I said, she'll fix it. <laughs> Jesus is a regulator and she'll be a fixer. Okay? And of course, he like, 
He like, all, all, I, I said, no, you said you wanted to fix this. Right. Amen. I said, so we're going to tell your wife. Also, you don't really want to fix it. You want to talk about all the stuff you're doing. Watch this. But you don't want to transition from what you really are. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I want to live in the benefits of the promised land, but I don't want to let go of the manna that's sitting over here in the wilderness. Because, see, you need to understand, when God moves you into the promised land, when God moves you into your best of what you have to do, you don't get manna anymore. Amen. You got to become an active sower and live off the land he puts you in. Amen. Your gift has to become active. Your anointing has to be used. Your mouth has to line up with the word of God. Your thoughts have to go through a transformation. You have to get to a point you become active in your faith. When you move from the wilderness into the promised land, you become an active believer at that moment. Amen. Talking about you didn't try everything. No, you hadn't. I could have fixed this on the first day. But, 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 but pastor, but what about this? What well, scripture? Well, you don't need no scripture for that one. You just need, you, you need an influence on your flesh that will remind your soul that said, the next time I do this, remember. Okay, all right, y'all get it at home. Tell your neighbor, say, click, click. And I was like, yeah, baby, I am not going to do that anymore. <laughs> Number two, I have the responsibility to guard my mind. Deuteronomy 4 and 9, Isaiah 26, my mind stays on him, 2 Peter 3, 17. Number three, I choose what I say and when I say it. Tell your neighbors all the old cussers. Say old cussers. That means you, you, you're not a cusser anymore. It means you used to be, but you're not anymore. Amen? Because see, you now, because you, you guard your mind, you choose what you say when you say it. So when it comes up for the opportunity, you tell them, say, no, you know what? This would be a good opportunity to cuss you out, but I'm a new person today. Tell your neighbors, say, but that flesh... See, the flesh is going to be on auto. The flesh is going to be like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean we're not, we're not going to say that? It flows. No, no, come on now. See, y'all laugh and everything like that, but I mean, I've met multilingual cussers. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, they, 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 don't, they don't have to think. I tell you to count from 1 to 10, if you're, if you're English anyway, and, and say 1 to 10 in Spanish, you know, you have to put a little thought into it about what you did in, in, in elementary school. Somebody tripped that wire you got sitting out there? See, that's the first thing. You got to get rid of that little, that little trip wire. No, no, you do. You have an emotional trip wire that says, you come across this line right here, I'm going to cuss you out. It's already in you. I mean, there's no doubt. You call the person. You can be talking to them. You already know. Be like, they're going to do it. I already know they're going to do it. And you be sitting there looking through your old book of cuss. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this one right here. I'm going to use this because this one right here had three syllables in it. I'm, gonna, I'm sure enough going to use that one. I'm going to use this. Uh-huh, keep on. Yeah. And you already can tell because they put tension on it. You can be sitting there, uh-huh, yeah. And you'll be sitting there in your mind be like, mm -hmm, they're they two words for me letting them have it, Lord. Mm -hmm. But instead, you should be praying, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that there's peace everywhere that I go. I thank you, Lord God, that you surround me with divine favor. I have favor with this person. We're going to be able to have a conversation. We're going to be able to talk about business deals. We're going to be able to talk about the children. We're going to be able to talk about the house. We're going to be able to talk about the neighborhood. You know, I have people in my neighborhood that I just don't even desire to see sometimes. Seriously, no, no. See, there's a way to come, because I live in a cul-de-sac, right? And I've come into the cul-de-sac cul and, and looped around because I didn't want to get out when I saw them they are going to get out, you know, before I pull in. Lord, like, what are you doing? I'd be like, Lord, it's just best that I don't, I don't, don't, don't need to see them. Amen. All right, I had one day, I mean, every, every Halloween, he, he wanted to decorate the whole yard. He lived right next door to me. I mean, he wanted to decorate everything. I mean, he got, he got casket, skull, bones, and everything. I mean, seriously. And I was like, God, I mean, the other couple that lived there before that, you know, just a good couple, you know, kids and everything. But he was weird and creepy. You know what I'm saying? All right? No, no, seriously. I, 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 you know, and I, I, because I have daughters, right? And one of the, the families across the street, all they had were girls, and they used to let them go over to his, and swim in his pool. I'd be like, why are you let them swim in the pool? And then, you know, even when, when his wife would see me, she'd be like, yeah, he got them girls over here going swimming in the pool. I'd be like, so his wife knew he was creepy. Yeah, that's true. Why you want teenage girls swimming in your pool and you 50 some year old man and you don't have no children? Or at least none at home. And of course the neighbor would be like, yeah, you know, the girls don't have to go down to the community pool. I bet you thick headed. <laughs> they couldn't see. Now, you said, Pastor, why? But I, I went through a transition. The Lord told me, He said, This is your land, your territory. What'd you say about this? When we started speaking, I said, God, I thank you. This house sold. 
I thank you, Lord God, even if he has to make a profit on it, whatever necessary, I thank you that an unsolicited offer comes to him, and I thank you that they move in Jesus' name. And we just kept speaking, kept speaking, a few months later, he said, yeah, we're, we're thinking about moving. Hey, no, Lord, we need them to go from thinking to action. In Jesus' name, manifest it, Lord God, up the offer, give it to them, whatever they need to do. And now they move. Now we got a family next door to us. They got children. I mean, they, they're in college, similar age to our children and everything. They speak. I speak to them in the morning time. They wave. They don't put any crazy things out. They celebrate Christmas and all the stuff. You know what I'm saying? Then your neighbor said, your neighborhood your is your territory. Your territory. Amen. Your neighborhood is your territory. Yeah. All right? So now, but I, but I got to choose what I say and can't come into alignment with what the circumstance and situation is. Now, if you don't have enough money, you got to start talking to that wallet. Now, the part of this in this trend, we'll talk about some of this here in just a second, because I'm going to give you three lists that is going to be important for you to grab hold of, is that you need to understand that transitioning means that I got to transition in thought before I ever will in action. Yes, hallelujah. Ain't no good man out there. Every time I date a man, he's just no good, bum, good for nothing. Well, I got news for you, because you think that way, you become that way, you magnetize, and that's what you draw. You draw bad men. You draw bad women. No, no, see, because you, you think every, every woman out there, all she wants is your money. So what do you keep finding? I can't understand. Every time I go out with somebody, she's a gold digger. You got gold digger thoughts. You've been magnetized for it. Amen. You leave the breadcrumbs for the gold digger. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, it's just like, you be like, I just don't understand, Lord. God, I told you I want a thug, but I want him saved. But you don't understand why he got all them other remnants left. <laughs> Just sitting out there be like, I don't understand this. I thought you said you got saved. Girl, you knew I was a thug in the day. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, in transition, in transition. You, don't thug. you don't need the thug. No, no, see, the only reason you think you need a thug is because you hadn't really walked out with a king under the anointing. You let that king put a ring on your finger. Child. You'd be like, I didn't even know. There was such Holy Ghost. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Amen. Tell your neighbor, said, I choose what language I use. You have a kingdom language. Now, today what we're going to do is talk about, say, kingdom transition. Number one, the first thing you got to do is that you have to learn how to adjust to the kingdom. All right, these are going to be the three main topics we're talking about now for the next three or four weeks. I tell your neighbors, I have to adjust, have to, adjust. To, the system. to the kingdom system. Now, th this is significant, right? Because, you know, one of the things you have to do to adjust in the kingdom is that you can't get the full benefit of the kingdom if you don't tithe. You can't get the full benefit of the kingdom if you don't read. You can't get the full benefit of the kingdom if you don't pray. You can't get the full benefits of the kingdom if you don't praise. You can't get the full benefit of the kingdom if you don't put on the whole armor. You can't get the full benefit of the kingdom if you don't listen to the word of God. You can't get the full benefit of the kingdom if you don't do the regiments of things that God intended for you to receive. Okay, so that, now that leads me into number two. I got to develop the regiment of transition. The Bible says, actually, let's go there and look at Joshua chapter three. Joshua chapter three, because uh, one of the things that was real significant with Joshua is that Joshua had to tell them, now y'all got to get ready because we're getting ready to go do something and we're getting ready to go away that we've never gone before. Amen. In Joshua 1 and verse 10, let me read that first. It says, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourself. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess it. Now, this is very significant because I thought it was very strange from a literary perspective that as you're reading through Joshua, you read through all of Joshua 1 and they're getting all ready. They're talking about taking courage. They're talking about what you have to do to be successful. And then all of a sudden they drop in. Hey, now we got to go and go spy out the land. But notice something Joshua did that Moses didn't do. Tell your neighbor, says, sometimes God, sometimes God gives new wisdom. How many people did Moses send out? And Joshua was one of them. How many? Twelve. Twelve spies, right? That wasn't a trick question. I know y'all thought it was, but it wasn't true. Uh, tell your neighbor, says, it was twelve spies. How many brought back good news? Two. Joshua and Caleb, right? All right, so now watch this. When it's time now, because Joshua's like, okay, we ain't going to make the same mistakes we made before. How many did Joshua send? Two. Joshua went around and said, now, well, you think we can do what we good? If God said, I believe Joshua surveyed the land. 
Just like, now we're in transition. I can't be going to get somebody who don't believe what God said. See, you get ready to buy your house and you're talking to it about people that you want to be jealous instead of people who want to be in agreement. And then you can't understand why there's so much spiritual hierarchical pressure pushing against you because you got folks out there that you told that didn't need to know about it out there saying things against you getting your breakthrough versus you finding somebody that will come into agreement. You don't know how to go through the transition. See, when you're in transition, you don't need the 10 against you speaking. You just want the two that's going to be in agreement. You done sent out your Christmas card with your faith house on the front of it. Listen, you, you six months from the house. Now you get ready. Now, January through June, everybody in their neighbor going to be talking against it. You already know your cousins don't like you. You don't even talk to them. And you done sent out 58 Christmas cards with your dream house on the front of it. Talking about y'all be in agreement with me. Look what the Lord about to do. And now your prayer seems like a 500 pound weight being pulled in the spirit realm because you have now made your transition period heavier than it needs to be. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, I got to prepare when it's time to cross over. Let me tell you something. When it's time to go into battle, you ain't trying to overload with stuff. You want the main thing. Our commander used to come through. He said, no, he said look here, make sure you carry all the ammo you can carry. Now, why? Because the ammo is going to be used to face the enemy, but it lightens my load as I engage the enemy. Okay, you, 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 you didn't get that, but that's okay. All right. Tell your neighbor, say, in transition, in transition. I take what I need because once I win, once I, need, I can go back. I can go back. Yeah, so you got to understand, when you get ready to go through this transition, you got to prepare yourself to do what's necessary, and then out there telling everybody about, you know, my, my Christmas card. No, 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 listen. Brother so-and-so, so-and-so, so -and -so, I know the Lord bless y'all. I heard pastor giving y'all testimony time of time, how y'all stood in faith and how God supernaturally blessed you with a house. I just want y'all to be in agreement with me. I'm, I'm using these three scriptures. These are the primary scriptures that I'm believing God for. Uh, do y'all feel like that's something that you can do? And here's what you're looking for. You think you can desire the house for me as much as I desire it for me? Did, did you hear that? You want somebody in agreement. They want you to have it better than more and worse than you want to have it for yourself. Amen. You ever meet some people like that? Girl, uh, is that what you bought? That's all right. But I see you in a Mercedes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You ain't walking. Amen. Praise God. Now, you did six months and you got that other car now. You need people like that in your life. Amen. What? You didn't get a five bedroom? Child, you know how big your family is. You know you need three more bedrooms. Then enjoy the house. Amen. Praise God. Just grace and love all over this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. But I, I mean, you can knock out that back room right there, put a new pool over there and everything, put you a little sun on this side. You'd be like, yeah, I don't know. okay. I didn't think about that. Put your sun room out there. You can read and be praying in the morning time, listening to the Holy Ghost. And you can be out there even in the winter months. It won't even be cold. The sun will be shining. Oh, yeah, baby. Did you hear what she just said? We need to do that back there. Tell your neighbor, say, I need somebody, I need somebody. while I'm in transition. Oh, that desires for me. That desires for me. Like, go, go, go to Joshua. Go to Joshua 1. Joshua 1. Joshua 1. I want to show you this. Because see, this is what Moses did when it came time for them to get ready to go and cross over to the other side. I want you to see this. Joshua chapter 1. We just read verse 10 and verse 11. And he's given the land to possess. So watch verse 12. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God has given you rest and has given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. But you shall pass before your brethren, armed, and all your mighty men of valor, and help them. Yeah. Wait a minute, you mean to say in transition, mm -hmm. God's going to bring along somebody yeah. that wants to help me to get what they already have in their life because they see it in my life like they see it in their own life. Because, see, they already got theirs. They could have been like, Moses gone, bro, peace. <laughs> we told Moses that. We didn't tell you that, but watch what they said. Tell your neighbor, said, real covenant friends. Real covenant friends. Watch this. He said in verse 15, until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you. So in other words, they already have theirs. Yes. And they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God has given them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it. 
which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of the Jordan and toward the sunrise. So they answered Joshua saying, all that you commanded us we will do and wherever you send us we will go. Do you have a friend that stick it closer than a brother when you're in the midst of going through something? Because when you're in transition, you don't need them little knock needed people. Y'all know what I mean? When the devil show up, they need to start to knock. You need somebody to be like, no, we got this. We've had people, people come to us, you know, we've been going through certain things. We'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Let me tell you something. Before we got this, this right happened to us too. This happened to you too? Oh yeah, we're going through this. Oh, look, let me, give you, let me give you a support scripture to deal with this. Mm-hmm. See, he's trying to take you off the main focus. Mm-hmm. And then he got all these little foxes over here. Now, they, just, they just ankle biters. Mm-hmm. But what they do, they distract you. Because so when you're supposed to be focused. And see, now the thing is, you got to get disciplined enough though. To tell your neighbor, say, transitional instruction, transitional instruction is not always easy to take. See, people think it's easy to stand up here. Because see, people, I say some people like, <coughs> be frowning and everything. That's why I don't look at their faces. I just, no, I just, I just teach to the thousands and be like, okay, praise the Lord, amen. I know I got to tell you this. You got to get through this. I'm trying to tell you this because I've gone through this already. See, that's going to teach you to follow those through faith and patience. So in other words, oh, so it's not just because you got stuff. It's because... You receive your stuff going through the same process. Yeah, see, see, you understand. See, God gave us someone that we could follow by faith. And then there were times Pastor Virginia and I went through stuff. We just had to find it in the Word. We, we tell some of y'all all the time, be like, no, don't do this right here now. Because, see, you know, I, can I give a natural example? I know some of y'all have gone through this here in the house, and several of you have written to me about this. I've been teaching for years. When God gets you to a certain level of giving, don't bag back. Let's say your tithe, uh, I don't know, I mean, I'm trying to, you know, so let's say an average tithe for everybody in the house. Let's say, so let's say your tithe is, is $1,000 every pay period. Mm-hmm. That, that okay? That yeah. the good? Okay. So you got $1,000 tithe, and you've been given, out of that $1,000 tithe, you give like a $300 offer. Mm-hmm. And, and you've been giving that, and you've been giving that, and you've been giving that, and you've been giving that. And you, just, come on, I, I can sense it right now. Just go with me. Mm-hmm. That's don't, don't matter what you, you, just tell your neighbor, say, I can at least live in his imagination. Amen, amen. And all of a sudden, something come up, alternator, tire, and then you rationalize, well, you know, if I cut this offering to 150, then the extra 150 that I got to pay for the tire for $300 won't be as hard on me if I just have to pay the whole 300. You, You see what you just did? You came up with a reasoning. You considered something else to help take you to the next level. But what it did was, it allowed you now to back off, watch this, the pressure you have been putting on your soul. See, your soul was learning, it was becoming part of your subconscious that this was always what we give. See, tithing and sowing is easy for Pastor Regina and I, because our soul already knows it don't have an option. It gets spiritual instruction, it follows, it submits. It's just like the general talking to the captain, talking to the private. And so when it comes to sowing and tithing and receiving what we're supposed to walk in, and then even when the natural comes back and says it's not available, and the soul says, hey, they say it ain't available. We tell the soul, we're like, we didn't ask you for no go. Listen, when, <laughs> thank you, Lord, that's a good example. When the general gives an instruction, he's not asking for an opinion. Amen. Oh, you're going to get this right now. You're going to get this right here. When the general gives a command, he's not asking for an opinion. So when you talk to your circumstance, why you allow it to talk back? Right. Amen. Right. I ain't looking for no opinion from my circumstance. Yeah. I ain't looking for no circumstance and test and trial to be telling me what it thinks. Yeah. Amen. I told you what you're going to go do. Yeah. And then your soul going to be like, well, they said, I ain't asked you what they said. They ain't in control. Yeah. See, but see, if you always keep getting your information from they mm. instead of from him, now you're going to consider what they say. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. Tell your neighbor, say, because I'm in transition. I'm in transition. All right, so now let's hit a couple of key things that I think will be a blessing to you. Tell your neighbor, say, because in transition, God's going to accelerate me. 
Right. God's going to accelerate me. So number one, we said I got to adjust to the kingdom. Number two, develop the regimen of transition. Number three, take courage and have faith for the transition. So what I'm going to focus on today is I'm going to talk about five things that help me adjust to the kingdom. Tell your neighbor, say five things that helps me adjust in the kingdom of God. Number one, the Bible tells me in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. We're going to read there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because tell your neighbor, say, because in this new atmosphere, I have to learn a new regiment. I have to learn a new pattern that I've never learned before. Matthew chapter 6, very familiar passage of scripture. And let's pick it up uh, around da, 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 verse 30. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father, say Father, Father. knows that you have need of all these things. So in other words, need doesn't move God. Amen. But seek what? First, tell your neighbor, say, in my transition, my transition. I, have learn, I have to learn how to seek the kingdom. How to seek the kingdom. Now, let's talk about what that means. Man, I hope I'm trying my best to get through all five of these here. What does it mean for me to really truly seek the kingdom? Number one, seeking the kingdom is not going to church. Going to church is part of being a kingdom seeker. Did, did you get that? Because, see, there are a lot of people who go to a church building and still never seek God. Because Luke chapter 17, well, we're right there. Let's just go over there. I don't need me telling you about it. Tell your neighbor, say, I'd rather read it anyway. I'd rather read it. Yeah, you rather read it anyway. Amen. 17 verse 20. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Tell your neighbor, say the kingdom of God, kingdom of God is, within me. is within me. Now what is the whole purpose of me seeking the kingdom of God for? Why do I need to do that? Because you need to understand that one of the things that God has given unto you is the ability to do things others can't do. Go down to Luke 19 now. Let me show you what this kingdom seeker is supposed to do. Because if you don't understand this, when you're going through transition, when God gives you an assignment, you won't keep it. Uh, there are times when we minister to people, you know, we, we're telling them they be going through stuff. Uh, you know, maybe they're going through a financial hardship. Maybe they're going through a divorce or uh, maybe they've gone through, you know, the transition of a family member or maybe they've gone through uh, the transition of work. And, you know, uh, by the way, uh, they say that when people, you know, have to change jobs, that it is almost as much pressure, if not more. Uh, emotionally, I'm talking about right now, uh, that is much pressure on them as it is going through the death of a family. Because most people depend so much on work to provide for their family that when they feel like their job is gone. Now, I'm talking about people who, I ain't talking about somebody who they work at McDonald's and Wendy's hiring. And, you know, they, are, you know, they already know that this person knows how to shake fries and there's other options and stuff like that. And I'm not knocking the job. I'm just saying there's some labor-based roles that's easier to transition out of from one to another. Everybody agree? Okay. If you worked at Wendy's, you can go work at McDonald's. So in case you're going through transition, that, that's a, that the path is. Amen? I, and I ain't saying that that's necessarily what you want to be doing, but McDonald's are more apt to make you an owner eventually more than Wendy's is because Wendy's don't franchise the same way. Hint, hint. So where everybody thought I was making fun of it, you need to understand I've seen fry shakers who now own McDonald's. Okay? Because that's part of their model. Everybody follow me? That's not part of Wendy's model. You see the difference in what I'm saying there? All right, now. But there's some people who've worked in places. Let, let's take our, our Midwest region, right? In the Ohio, Illinois, Michigan area, that when some of those factories and plants shut down, other than a couple of miscellaneous stores and things like that, there's nothing else in that region for those people to shift to. So what do they do? They got to be able to trust and believe that even in a land that looks like famine, they're transitioning into the kingdom that can always provide. Amen. Now, Financially, one of the kingdoms that you are adjusting to, you have to get adjusted to a kingdom that can provide when currency looks low in the place where you are. But you have to remind yourself to I'm an ambassador that has on call finances or grace and favor from a homeland. You know, 
uh, my, my, my daughter has this one particular friend and uh, she's always talking to my wife about this friend, you know, and so um, apparently where they are right now, uh, the family is not in the same place where we are, amen? And, and nothing is, and I mean, they, they made sure they went to school and all this kind of stuff. And so uh, they were getting ready to go do something and uh, they all got to talking about that they didn't have enough money to go do it, right? And so they were all talking about, you know, well, I'm going to have to go do this, I'm going to have to go save and everything. <laughs> and this person <laughs> told Scott, I said, Scott, you need to call our daddy. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 <laughs> and Scott told the mom and said, now, does daddy know our situation? Because we all know that daddy has on call resources. So you need to call him. <laughs> now, now that, that's it, be it jokingly, but you guys have heard me say, Skylar has a trust, a reliance, a dependency on her parents. All right? As a mama said, specifically on daddy when it comes to finances, that she will shop, go all the way through the store, go through the store again. Tell your neighbor, say, plenty of time to call. Come all the way to the self-checkout. Check herself out. Bag it. And then call me and say, hey, Daddy, I need money. I'm at the Target. I'd be like, okay, sweetie. I said, well, you know, when do you need it? She goes, now. I said, well, have you bought everything? Well, Dad, I've already checked out. I just need to pay. Watch this. Without any thought, without any consciousness, without any reservation of what if daddy don't have it and I already bagged it and I'm going to be embarrassed and have to put it back. Tell your neighbor, say, in the transition, in the, transition. In the, kingdom, in the kingdom, daddy never runs out. Okay, okay, okay. Move that to the tell your neighbor said, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through I, promise you, I promise you, the Father has more than enough. The Father has more than enough. Amen. Amen. But see, if you don't go through this full transition, you, you won't believe it. Why? Because see, a true kingdom seeker knows that the kingdom of God lives inside of them, and no matter where you go, my kingdom is with me. See, you, you, you're not going to ever catch me off guard. See, when the devil tries to tell you that, tell your neighbor, said, but I got to adjust to the kingdom. Uh, go with me to Ephesians real quick. I'll show you what I mean. Holler here. Ephesians. I know y'all like these, you know, those Pauline's epistles. Amen. They're good epistles. Amen. Go to Ephesians and let's see do where I want to go here. I think I want you to go to Ephesians 6. Hallelujah. Let me find the, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Glory to God. No, that's not it. That's not the one I'm looking for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, that ain't it. That ain't it. Hold on a second. See, see, even your pastor. See, I got I to gotta go back and. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, when you have it, say amen. amen. It says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you, Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he has made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Tell your neighbors to understand it. Jump down to verse 8. Uh, I mean, there's other good stuff in there, but I want to I get you some. Ah, no, if I do that, I'm going to disrupt you. Just, just stay with me for a few scriptures, okay? It says, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Watch verse 8. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Christ Jesus to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God may be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus, in whom 
we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Tell your neighbor, say, in my transition, in my transition I, have I have to be bold that I have access, I have access to whatever the need is. Whatever the need is in your life, you have access to the breakthrough. You have access to the increase. You have access to the overflow. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter. Tell your neighbor, say, when I learn to seek God, and seek the kingdom of God, I can see the unseen. I can see the unseen. Okay, I'm running out of time. I'm not going to give you all this, but let me say this, this last part here. Once I learn how to seek the kingdom, I learn also how to seek my way out, even in hard times. Joshua said that he didn't understand in Joshua chapter 8 what had taken place and the Lord had already promised them that they were going to defeat both Jericho and Ai. And Ai was not even nearly as big as Jericho. And the Lord said to him, he said, what are you doing? He said, well, I don't understand. He said, listen, I made my promise. The issue is on your side. And we go back and we notice that somebody had done, done, had done something they weren't supposed to do, right? They had kept something. And he came back and said, Achan, what have you done? Well, we realized he had kept an offering that belonged to the Lord. But Why? He was trying to get Joshua to see, hey, when I give a promise, you don't have to question my part. Yeah. If the breakthrough didn't happen, it's sitting with you. Wow. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, when I transition, when I transition into, the into the kingdom, if it doesn't manifest, it doesn't manifest it's not God. Tell your neighbor, say, now I need to evaluate that. I need to evaluate that. So then in other words, I go back and this is the first thing I do. If the enemy attacks me financially, and certain things, not, it's not always, first thing I do is, that, okay, Lord, did I miss a tithe? Which we, we don't, but I'm just saying, we go back and I go, okay, this is it. Guess what? Uh, sometimes you have to go back and look because your tax amount can change when you get closer to the end of the year. And this is why we tell people to always tithe on their gross. You don't have to deal with that. Just, just net, net. That's just an instructional thing. Because see, if your tithe change, then that means your net change. And then if you're tithing off your net and you tithe off before the tithe change, and then there's only so much Social Security they can take out of your check. And then when you get to the end of the year, it changes. Then all of a sudden, you, you, you didn't miss the tithe. Tell your neighbor, it wasn't intentional, but it still impacts. Yeah, it wasn't intentional, but it still impacts. So the next thing I do is, that, Lord, did you give me instruction to sow somewhere as a sacrifice and I didn't obey? I go back and I look. And then I go back and I look. I be like, Lord, is there a door open somewhere and the enemy's just, just now just being mean? Tell, tell your neighbor, because the devil has mean people on his side. There are folks who just try to come against you, folks, and it doesn't matter what it is you're doing. And then second, we live till you never said law of confession. The law of agreement and the law of meditation. See, and I, and I think we also had the law of momentum in there, I think was number four. But you need to understand is that I need to say what God says all the time. I need to make sure that I'm operating in the law of seed time and harvest. I need to make sure that I'm operating off the law of meditation. What I picture, what I ponder, what I personalize, what I practice. I ponder the word of God. I picture the manifestation of that in my life. I practice it as much as I can. I believe God's given me a new car. I go take a test drive on the car. I go buy me a blank key and hold on to it by faith. And when I go crank my car, I take that key first, put it up to the door and say, in Jesus name, you unlock automatically. And then I take the right key and open the door. What am I doing? I'm practicing my faith. Amen. The same thing we talked about when we were pulling in into the, into the parking lot. I pull in like I was going to park there and do everything that I could. Step by step by step, I'm practicing going through the process as much as I possibly can. And I'm telling you right now, as you go through transition, there are going to be things that you're going to have to do that's different than what the enemy wants you to be able to see. Tell your neighbor, because when I trust God, I trust God. the atmosphere shifts. When I do, I'll tell your neighbor, say, when I use the regiments of God, I can have everything he gave me. You need to understand that God has already created an atmosphere for you to occupy, hold, and advance. Amen. God has already created an atmosphere for you to be able to occupy, hold, and advance. I'll tell your neighbor, say, it's time to advance, it's time to advance. And, hold and hold on to what God gave you. I'll tell your neighbor, say, I'm in transition, I'm in transition. but I win. Now, now, now let, let me close with this. Transition does not mean no faith fight. Transition does not mean you stop sowing. But there's a transition. Uh, Paul transitioned from what it meant to be a persecutor to a preacher. Paul transitioned from what it means to be an accuser to an apostle. Joseph 
transitioned for what it meant to be a prisoner to a prime minister. David transitioned for what it meant to be a shepherd to a king. Joseph is a very good example of being able to see phases of transition from being a brother that was loved by his father to now being put down into a pit and slowed into slavery to walking in a divine favor with Potiphar to now all of a sudden ending up in prison because somebody lied on them to now all of a sudden in a place to be able to be a blessing to other people. Tell your neighbors, the transition, transition. is part of life. I got news for you. Your next promotion has a faith fight and a devil bigger than the last job you just had. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Tell you, and oh, no, they ain't why I want the promotion. <laughs> let me tell you something. If you think Satan is going to let you go to a new level of financial increase and not have another giant on the other side of it, what makes you think it's going to get easier if the Bible told you to live by your faith? Amen. Tell your neighbors, every day, every day. I, live I live by my faith. Now, one of the reasons, yeah, thank you, Lord, I'll say that. One of the reasons people are struggling to get the promotion because they won't do what they're supposed to do with the finances at the level where they are now. And if you're not going to increase like God tell you to increase and obey like God tell you to obey, that means, watch this, you ain't following the transition plan. And by the way, it ain't always just more money. Sometimes uh, the Lord is teaching you, well, so I think we've taught you this multiple times, right? Number one, I'm a son. Number two, I'm supposed to sow. Number two, three, I'm supposed to save. Number four, I'm supposed to be a good steward. And a lot of times people violate that last one. You just got to have that whatever, right? That Clark bar, that cheesecake, that extra piece of chicken, you know. You go through, you, you know, two pieces on sale and you tell them to add two more pieces. Well, no, just buy the four piece. But you feel better. Well, yeah, you know, if I get the two pieces. No, just go and buy the four pieces of chicken because you're going to spend it regardless. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, I, I need to learn how to be a good steward. Transitioning to one level to the next, you got to learn how to be a good steward. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've, my sons especially, right, because they, they're, they're older and, you know, and young adults. And one of the things I said to them, I said, you need to understand, as you transition into your adulthood, even as a king, you may not transition at the same level where you left our house. Hold by faith and believe God because there's some territory you got to be able to go face the giants that God has for you because you got to take the territory and take the land. Now, people don't like to hear that. Well, shoot, you know, if dad and mom were rich, then I just want to go out there and be rich. And you see how those people turn out? It's not good for you. You, God, God knew that. God told them, the children of Israel that they had to grow, they had to develop to be able to go and get to the next level. Tell your neighbors, I'm in transition, I'm in transition. and I believe I, win. I believe I win. Father, we thank you for the word that it falls on good ground. Unhindered by any demonic force, dark power, principality, we thank you that you direct us and guide us by the unction of the Holy Ghost. And we believe that we win. 2022 is our best financial year ever. And we are six-figure tithers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, partners, families, and friends, thank you so much for partnering with us. This is Pastor Tony and Pastor Virginia telling you how much we love you. Thank you for your contributions and all that you do to help us advance the kingdom of God and to spread the good news of the gospel. I know a lot of you are going through a lot of things out there, but I'm here to tell you that God is faithful to his word. You stay with him. The atmosphere of faith can help you get through it. Do the regimens that God has put in place, and God will create a transition plan for you to take over the next level of territory and terrain that he has in your life. We'll see you on Wednesday night. We love you. Blessings. I don't know what plan he has to stop from spinning, but what God promised me, by faith, I believe that I've already received. Hey, everybody. This is Pastor Tony Shaw at the Anointed Kingdom Dominion Faith Center. I'd like you to come out and join us with the Faith Champions on Sunday mornings at 1045 a.m., Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., right here at the New Sheraton Hotel in McKinney, Texas. Come out and learn how to be a faith champion. Be convicted and persuaded beyond doubt that this is the fact regardless of what I see.